welcome back. In today's episode, I'm reviewing this Fujifilm camera. It's the Instax Mini Evo, which is probably my favorite Instax camera to date. Now, I haven't mentioned Instax on this channel so far, but I've been doing work with Instax for the past four to five years, mostly promotional stuff, film and video and stuff like that. And I've used every single Instax camera since about the SQ1, which yeah, came out around four or five years ago. Now this camera here, the Mini Evo, this costs around 175 pounds in shops or $200. It came out earlier this year and I've been using it consistently for the past four to five months. Now it's also worth noting and important to note, like with all the reviews on this channel, this isn't sponsored. Fujifilm didn't send me this camera for this review and all of my thoughts and views on this camera are purely based on my experience using it for the past four or five months. Okay, so first up, if you are looking to get it in stacks, there's a couple directions you can go down. First up, you can go analog. Cameras like this Instax Mini 40, usually they're a bit cheaper than the digital versions and they are a bit easier to use. Next up, there's also the printers. So like the Mini Link 2 here, these ones are just printers. They also have some cool features as well. Finally, there's digital Instax cameras like this Mini Evo. For me, the digital Instax cameras are best value for money. Even though they're a bit more expensive from the outset, you actually end up saving money because you're not wasting prints and you're not taking shots by mistake. And best of all, this Mini Evo doubles up as a printer. So if you have any photos on your phone or on your camera, you can also print them off using the app. So the analog Instax prints do look a bit different from the digital ones. These do have a more old school retro kind of softer look to the prints. So if you are looking for that look specifically, then do go for an analog one. But um, on the digital ones, so with the Mini Evo, you get the option of changing the filters and adding effects to your shots. You can get really creative that way. I'm gonna get into that in a bit more detail shortly. All right, so let's get on to the look and feel of this Instax Mini Evo and I absolutely love the way this camera looks. It's pretty much an Instax version of the X100V, and yeah, I just really love that kind of retro kind of style to it. It's real light in the hand, mostly made of plastic, feels pretty sturdy. So on the front here, we've got a shutter button, we've got the on off switch, we have the lens, and there's also this ring around the lens. So the main feature of this Instax Mini Evo revolves around the dial at the front, around the lens, and the one at the top of the camera. And these allow you to choose both the lens and film effects. So this ring around the front, which reminds me of Fujifilm X-Series lenses, where they have the aperture dial. So this allows you to choose the lens effects, like light leaks, double exposure, color shift, and stuff like that. Whereas the dial up top, this is for film effects. And this one is a bit like film simulations on your X-Series camera. So from here, you can add effects like monochrome or sepia or vivid. And you can also combine the lens effects with the film effects. And in total, there's about 100 different combos you can come up with and you can get really creative with it. Now for me, some of the film simulations and effects are pretty hit and miss. I had fun using the color shift, light leak and mirror. As for the film effects, I'm a big fan of the monochrome, but um, mostly if I'm not using the monochrome, I was using normal. And it's also worth remembering that once you've taken a shot, you can't add an effect or a film style to it afterwards. So at the top here, there's another shutter button. The good thing about these shutter buttons is whether you're shooting in portrait mode or in landscape, it's always easy to hit that shutter button. There's also another function button up here that allows you to reset your settings. And finally, there's this little lever here to print your photos. Now this is pretty satisfying to use, to be honest, and it makes a nice sound when you pull it. But basically, once you choose a photo to print, you just pull that lever and the Instax Mini Evo prints the photo. Now, unlike Fujifilm's analog cameras, where when you shoot, it directly prints that shot, on the Instax Mini Evo, when you shoot, nothing happens. It just saves that shot to the memory. And then afterwards, you go through the menu and choose the ones you want to print. Getting back to the camera body here, at the bottom, there's a micro SD slot. The camera itself can hold 45 shots without any memory card installed. Finally, there's a charging port. It is micro USB. I really wish this was USB-C. On the back of the screen here, we have a display. It is decent, but if you're shooting outdoors and it is bright, it can get pretty difficult to see the back of the screen. As there's no viewfinder, this is the only way to interact with the camera. So when it is bright, they can get a bit annoying. That aside, there's the playback button to see the photos you've already taken. There's also a button with a plus sign on it, which allows you to save a lens and film effect combo. You also have access to exposure compensation, timer, 
flash settings, macro mode, and white balance. There's also a menu system where you can adjust the print quality and brightness. But after playing with both of these settings, I decided to leave them both on default. There is an Instax rich mode, but for me, it made the colors a bit too intense and the whole photo a bit too contrasty for my liking. So as I said, I just turned those back to default and used the camera like that. Okay, so next up, let's talk image quality when it comes to the Instax Mini Evo. Now, as you can see from the shots on the screen at the moment, I headed into central London to do some street photography with this camera. And uh, yeah, you can get some pretty decent shots with this. Image quality wise, in my opinion, it's not too different from the shots you're gonna take on your iPhone or smartphone, which is to be expected for a digital camera, which costs around $200 or 175 pounds. But while you can get pretty decent shots, I wouldn't recommend it for street photography. It really wasn't designed for that. It takes around five to six seconds between taking a shot and going to the next shot. So you have to be on point with your timing. But it is a fun camera to use, not one for street photography, but the image quality is more than good enough for what this camera is mainly used for. So next up, print quality. And as I said earlier, the best thing about this camera is the fact that it's both a camera and a printer. So what you can actually do is you can take your shots on your digital camera, like your X-T4, or on your iPhone or smartphone, edit those photos up on your phone and then send them over to the Instax Mini Evo to print. And the print quality is really good. I've always been happy with Instax's prints, especially when I'm printing out photos I've taken on my X-Pro2 or my X-T4. If you see these shots here, which I took in Japan a couple years back and printed a couple years back, the prints still hold all their color. They haven't really degraded at all. And yeah, the quality just really holds up over the years. These ones here are prints from shots I actually took on the Mini Evo. And these ones here are shots I took on my X-T4, transferred to my phone, and then transfer to the Instax Mini Evo to print. So yeah, when it comes to print quality, I've always been real happy with Instax prints and there's no difference with the Instax Mini Evo. You can also send photos from the Mini Evo to your smartphone and you can actually send them with the Instax frame around them, which makes it really cool when you're sharing on Instagram or on Twitter. The weird thing is you can only send photos which you've printed, which is a bit strange seeing that it is a digital camera, but uh, yeah, there is that. So to wrap this review up, if this was a printer and it was worth 175 pounds, I'd probably say it is worth buying. And add to that, that you can take photos with it. It is a camera, it's pretty fun to use. You have some fun filters and the effects you can add to your shots. So yeah, in all, I think at 175 pounds, $200, it's well worth its price. It's real fun. I don't really recommend it for serious street photography or anything like that. But there are times where I head into events or I go to a social event or a party. I don't want to bring my X-Series camera. And instead, I just take the Instax Mini Evo with me and take some fun candid shots instead, which I print out and share about. So that just about wraps up today's review. If you have any questions about the Mini Evo or any Instax camera, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Instax cameras in general. If you have one or you have any questions about them, them, as I said, again, drop them down below in the comments. As always, a massive thanks for supporting this channel. I really do appreciate it. Just hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't already, remember to subscribe, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one.